Hello there, right here and behind me is a AFK Lava Bucket Farm. With the setup here, you automatically will get lava while you're AFKing. And this is a new feature in 1.17. Using cauldrons as well as the pointed dripstone. If you guys want to learn all about this, make sure to check out my previous video where I covered 24 tricks that you can do with this one little block. During the stream where we did all this testing, we also came up with some ideas on how to farm it up. I want to thank all you guys that joined during the stream. That was a lot of fun. We had close to 300 people watching and almost 60 people on the server. One of our largest attendants of all time. So if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe as well as click the bell so you get notified of when we open that world up so you guys can hop on. You might recognize this farm as being the same design as we used in my powder snow farm. That's because both powder snow and lava is obtained by letting it fill up in a cauldron and then scooping it out with an empty bucket. So what I got here is a whole bunch of lava sources on top. Then there is a support block, which is supporting the pointed dripstone. Then right underneath of that is the cauldron. Then over time, the cauldron will fill up with lava. Then you can scoop the lava out and that will provide you with a lava bucket. Now these actually fill in really fast. In 10 minutes, 80% of all cauldrons will be full. And also add some improvements I talked about at the end of the powder snow farm, like having a cauldron in all of the rows. So it is a solid area full of cauldrons. So there's a lot more area for to farm up the lava. The way it works is a player will be inside of a minecart riding this rail system. You'll have 16 buckets on you and then you will aim right on the edge of one of these feet here. So let me scoot over a little bit right about here. So notice I'm looking at actually two different cauldrons every time I move over one block. Look at this cauldron and then when I move over I'm looking at this cauldron. That's because I'm first aiming at the foot of the cauldron that is above me. Then I am aiming at the bottom piece of the cauldron that's farther away. So with this, you can actually do twice as much collecting of the cauldrons. So it's about 58 degrees where you aim. And then what you do is you hold right click and then you press F3 plus T. And then when that pops up, you lift up on the right click button. That means your mouse is going to be constantly held down. Now I'm pushing forward until I hit one of the first power rails and then everything else will be automatic. With a little mouse hold down trick, you don't have to have any kind of weights or anything holding down on your keyboard. So let's see if I can hit the power rail there. So now I don't have to touch my keyboard at all. My guy just go around picking up all the stuff. Now you can AFK as long as you want. And there's automatic systems that will give the player more buckets so that he can keep going. And all the lava buckets are also being collected by another system and being stored away. And the items drop out just like the powder snow farm. We're aiming this direction so when the items fall they hit up against this fence here and then they fall into the water streams underneath. The items get washed all the way to the end and they drop down into this water stream and they get washed all to this end. And you can have some hoppers and put them into chests. Each lava bucket does take up one room. So you do want to have a lot of storage. You can see my alt in here scooping up any lava that comes in front of his face. And because the player is holding right click, the game only checks to see if it can scoop up something or use a hand every four game ticks. So it's not going to collect every single lava source that's in front of the player. Over time, he'll eventually get them all. But just as fast as he picks them up, there will be more of them getting filled. The player will start over here and will activate this redstone and this turns on a clock way down there so that when the player reaches that area he will be able to pick up some more buckets. Then the player will come over here we have a waterlogged R rail just so he gives a little bit of boost but not too fast and he'll slowly make his way along here and he'll just barely creep in the time it's to this end he'll be able to pick up the buckets. You can see the player going across anytime he comes in contact with something he can scoop up Scoop it up and then drops in. He fills up his buckets and continues on to the next row. The water log rails actually work pretty good. We slow down the player quite a bit. Because the lava fills up pretty fast, we want the player to try to get as much as possible for every pass. So slow him down actually works pretty good. When he hits these ends here, it also turns off the previous clock and then it turns on the next clock. So there's always some buckets for him to pick up. And after he goes through all the different layers, he will turn off the clocks. And then the extra buckets will eventually be picked back up by this hopper system and will be stored inside of the droppers. That's another change I made is the way the dropper system is refilled. We still use a chest minecart to come by and put buckets inside of these hoppers. But instead of having the hopper point directly into this dropper here, we have it actually point all the way down into this hopper way down here. The reason for this is because by having the hopper point directly into that, it fills up this dropper. Then all the items that were left on the ground there wouldn't have any room to go into the dropper. So instead, take advantage of how items go into hoppers. So I got a little example over here. 
This is the dropper system over here. This is the hopper that normally picks it up. And if we try to push in items into this full hopper from these three sides, the game will always pick up the item that is on top before accepting items from the side. Notice how these are all pretty much full. If I happen to power this and cycle these items, notice that the bucket that was there actually got pulled in, a new bucket landed on top. And all the buckets along the edges here were able to go in before the item that was on top. So the item on top always has priority. And this makes it easy to refill. I could just try to put items in here and only if there's room, like if the player took some, then will it take out of here. And that way we don't have to worry about any items despawning. The actual clock system, which drops all the items, is pretty much exactly the same as my Potter Snow Farm, where there's a little bit of redstone that goes to each of these pistons and they just push observers that make clocks. And then they remove the observers to stop the clock. The water collection changed a little bit on the far end here. Instead of all the items falling into a single water stream, I just made it too wide. The reason for this is I put in that new type of reloading system for the buckets, which takes up a little more room. So some of the redstone kind of hangs down into the water. So I lower the water all down by one. And every row is not exactly the same. Like this row has a gate and then this row has a trap door. And that's to let the redstone vent in there. I also keep the trap door powered by something. I'm using redstone block. You can use a lever. Just so it doesn't flicker, it just alternates like this the whole way across. This way when the player comes around here and he like scoops up this cauldron here, sometimes the player is about saying about right around here by the time the item gets thrown out and he'll throw it over here and he'll still be able to make it down into that hole. Or when he comes into the next row, he goes underneath of here, there's no cauldron, he goes this direction and right around here he starts throwing items out. So we don't need as big a hole for the items to be caught. The trap door will just prevent items from getting shot this direction when they come down the water thing and getting shot into the area where the redstone is. Then all the items eventually make it to the far end where the hoppers will pick them up. And this compact setup here produces over 2,400 lava buckets per hour. They also need a lot of empty buckets. And currently what I got going on here is the system that is resupplying it. Got a chest minecart taking the items across all of those and filling them up. But you need a lot of storage on top of this depending on how long you want to AFK. Currently I just have commands here which are refilling these chest empty buckets on both sides. You probably would want a decent iron farm. I do have a simple iron farm as well as a very fast one. You can find the links down in the description. But you would have to craft those into buckets. If you wanted to make like kind of a automatic way of getting buckets, you could have wandering traders spawn and kill those because when it turns daytime after being invisible, they'll drink a milk bucket and then you kill them during this time, you have a chance of getting a bucket. Definitely not worth it with a farm this fast, but you can get buckets automatically. Now when you do use up your lava buckets, you can turn around and take the empty buckets and resupply the system. So you can hook this up to like a furnace array as lava is one of the best sources of fuel. But I personally don't think this will be the way people fuel their furnaces. And the reason for this is because you have to use a player scooping the cauldrons in order to get this renewable source of lava versus having something like a bamboo farm where it can automatically break off the bamboo and, and use them for your furnace array. The player just needs to be within the area, but he doesn't actually need to be holding any buttons down. During our live stream, one of the Mojang developers, Henrik, joined for a couple hours and joined us in testing out all the new features of the current snapshot. And the question he asked us was, do we think that it's too overpowered having a renewable source of lava? More precisely, should the lava source, which it's pulling its drips from, eventually run out? And after thinking about it, I don't think it's overpowered. Reason being is that lava itself isn't too overpowered. There's not a ton you can do with it. Probably one of the more useful things is a fuel source. A thousand seconds of cooking in a furnace is pretty good, but in my opinion, it's just too manual, especially since there's no like way to use dispensers and empty buckets to automatically scoop from the cauldrons. As much as I wish there was that type of redstone in the game, so that as soon as these filled up, we could automatically scoop them up and take the lava bucket to like a furnace. At that point, the developers might find it too powerful and then they might nerf it so that it uses up the source. Now, if they do make it use up the source, all you would have to do is take one of these lava buckets, bring it back to the top and dispense it using a dispenser. So that part could be automated. But besides like smelting or trading with the villager, there's not too much else you can do with it, especially on large scales. You might use a little bit of it to inside of a mob farm. Now, the top here has to be solid sources of lava. So to even build this farm, it's going to take a lot of sources, which you can get to the nether dimension, but you can't use like the flowing parts of it. That won't produce any lava. It has to be directly above the source. 
Now, if you want to, you can expand this farm as it is tileable. You can make this as big as you want, but it does only fill up the cauldrons during random ticks. And like I said earlier, in 10 minutes, there's an 80% chance that the cauldron will be full. But I personally don't think you need to make the farm any bigger than this, unless they come out with some new uses for lava. You could always use it to make obsidian. And this seems pretty tedious compared to using like the obsidian platform or just getting it from bartering. Now, if you do let this farm fill up and then come here to AFK, make sure that the first round you go ahead and have two stacks of buckets and switch them before they go empty. Because you're aiming at twice as many pauldrons per row and there are 16 here, you could use up all your buckets and then you'll be dropping out lava on the ends here. You could prevent that by putting like some trap doors here or something so the player can't lava log them and you can't break rails with lava anymore. So then you really wouldn't have to worry about it too much. And then every round afterwards you can AFK without worrying about anything. To worry about these items landing here, you could put in some trap doors underneath the rails and then open the trap doors so there's emptiness and let the items fall through. The player could still ride his minecart on top and have a little bit larger water assist underneath to collect all the items. And if you are building this, make sure to build this in the same direction like I have it here. Now if you are AFKing this, you do want to prevent phantoms from coming down. The one easy way you could do is just by putting some blocks over top of all the places the player is exposed to skylight. Now this build is inside of the same world where I do all my 1.17 testing as well as all my 1.17 farms. So if you haven't seen my other farms, I'll link them down below. There's two different types of copper farms. There's amethyst shard, amethyst bud, and shulker shell farm, and the powder snow farm. Plus now we also have the lava source farm. And if you made this far in the video, make sure to give the video a like as well as share with others so they can check out these cool 1.17 farms in their world. As always, I have the world downloads in the description. I would like to thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.